Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and last year two brands pulled out all the stops to bring a device out that represented all the best things about their respective brands. But before we get into that, I wanted to point you in the direction of Crunchyroll. It offers some of the best anime shows around. One of my favourites is Naruto Shippuden, which features some fantastic animations, some great action sequences, and Crunchyroll has all the most recent and current episodes of the show. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can sign up for Crunchyroll Premium which gives you things like full HD content and an ad-free experience. If you want to try it free for 30 days, just click the link in the description box. And now on to the dogfight. Last year, BlackBerry released a productivity beast with an innovative keyboard. Samsung released a phablet that easily beats any it has released in the past. But which is the best for you? Let's find out. On the surface, and in the most obvious ways, these two smartphones are miles apart in terms of looks. But when you look closer, they're surprisingly similar. Both have metal chassis supporting the rest of the phone, giving them a sturdy and durable build. They're both glass on the front and plastic on the back, but there are some differences, clearly. Neither phone is small, that's a given. At 90.3mm wide, the Passport is 11.4mm wider than the Note 4 but it is 25.5 millimeters shorter and less than a millimeter thicker. It also happens to be 20 grams heavier, and there are both benefits and disadvantages to its size and weight. First off, the BlackBerry feels incredibly sturdy and well made, more so than the Note 4. And while neither device is a one-handed phone, thanks to their size, the Passport feels better being held in two hands because of the curved edges on the back. The bendy, thin and flimsy plastic back on the Note 4 really does nothing to encourage faith in its solidity. But once you clicked it in place, you almost forget it's there. Samsung should be praised for the way it's somehow made a device with a huge screen feel smaller than it looks. It's a slim and well-shaped device with Corning Gorilla Glass 4 on the front, and that's versus BlackBerry's Gorilla Glass 3. That said, I have to give the design round to the BlackBerry on this one. And while I prefer the classic black and metal accents on the Passport and detest the pinstripe finish on the Note 4 and the rippled plastic on the back, those have nothing to do with the decision on this round. It's all about fit and finish and durability. Everything about the BlackBerry feels sturdier, a little bit more purposeful. Even the buttons feel more solid when you press them. If we get onto the displays, then it really, they couldn't be more different from each other. On the one hand, we have a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED screen boasting a resolution of 1440 by 2560. The BlackBerry is a 1440 by 1440 four and a half inch square LCD panel. And neither is a poor display quality wise. But at 515 pixels per inch, the Note 4 has 62 more pixels per inch than the BlackBerry. It's also noticeably more vivid and its contrast levels are fantastic. Blacks look incredibly dark and colours are full of life. That said, the LCD panel on BlackBerry's flagship is impressively accurate. Colours are natural, whites don't really change colour depending on viewing angles. At least not enough to make for a poor experience. It's only the shape really that lets down the BlackBerry. It's not good for anything except reading-based tasks like browsing, email and messaging. For apps or watching videos, it's really frustrating to use. For that reason, this round goes to the Galaxy Note 4. It's much better for media consumption and also makes for great productivity thanks to being able to have more than one window on screen at the same time. In the performance and battery life category, things might surprise you a little. Since it's loaded with Qualcomm's impressive Snapdragon 805 series chip, you'd assume that the Note would wipe the floor with the BlackBerry in daily use. But it doesn't. There's sometimes noticeable delay when launching the multitasking screen or opening up the app drawer. With a processor this powerful, you expect instant, super-fast loading times. And while generally you get those, it's not consistent. It's almost an old cliche now, but there's still evidence to support the theory that TouchWiz isn't entirely efficient. I'd love to see this thing fly on stock Android 5.0 or 5.1 Lollipop. As for the BlackBerry, native apps, user interface interactions are all fluid and fast. Whether you're swiping to get to the hub or go back to the home screen, it's just instant. It's rather fantastic. And the reason for this speediness is Snapdragon's 801 series quad-core chip and 3GB of RAM, which on BlackBerry OS X really does make the device fly. 
The only time it struggles is when you try loading an Android app that's not quite optimized for BlackBerry. What's more, it connects to networks, both cellular and Wi-Fi, with more consistency, as has almost always been the case with Blackberries. And it's a similar story in the battery life, but the difference isn't really as noticeable. I can get two days of use from both phones with light to moderate use. So you're not going to struggle on that front if you buy either device. But the BlackBerry seems, once more, to get me consistently longer out of every charge. And it's no surprise. It has a lower resolution, smaller screen, and a 3450 mAh battery. That's versus Samsung's 3220 mAh cell. So this round goes to the BlackBerry. But onto the camera, and there's no contest. It's not just the on-paper specs that have the Note 4 as the better camera of the two. Real-life performance is also better. Images are better, especially in low light. What's more, taking pictures on the BlackBerry can be a struggle, thanks again to that square display. Colours, sharpness, and of course, video quality is superior on the Note 4. Saying that, BlackBerry lovers will be pleased to see that this is easily the best camera the company has ever put on its phones. It just so happens that the Note 4 has one of the best cameras on the market. Period. Both phones have innovative and useful input methods. BlackBerry's keyboard is easy to type on and offers a reassuring click, but also hides its magical touch sensitivity which enables you to scroll through lists and documents without touching the screen. The Note 4 has an S Pen which can also be used for writing, taking screenshots, drawing and, with Air Command, perform a number of handy tasks on the fly. But which one of those two is better? I can't really say. I love handwriting as much as I love typing on a physical keyboard. So I'll leave that one for you to decide. Overall, there's no denying that, as an overall package, the Note 4 is going to be the best phone for most consumers. It's powerful, capable of multi-window multitasking, and has an incredible camera. It's also going to be better for media consumption and gaming, so in that regard, the Note 4 is the winner. But for those who want a pure productivity beast that's reliable, fast, and they don't really care for too many bells and whistles, the Passport is an awesome choice. I've been Cam from PhoneDog.com. You can follow me on Twitter or ask me questions on there. I'm at PhoneDog underscore Cam. Don't forget, if you like our videos, please do click that thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. Or just leave your comments in the comments section down below and I'll get involved as and when I can. I'll see you again soon.